Volkswagen ramps up its efforts in the EV segment with this ID4 compact mid-size crossover, the Mark's first global market electric vehicle. It aims to deliver more of a premium choice than volume brands can currently offer in this rapidly growing segment. Ready for the EV switch and need a reasonably compact SUV with a bit more of an upmarket feel? We think you might be tempted by this one. There's a lot to adapt to if this is your first experience of EV motoring. Uh, there's no gear stick, there's no handbrake, there's no ignition key, and there's just the sound of silence as the fixed ratio transmission blends an almost endless wave of torque into meaningful and surprisingly rapid forward progress. The forward thrust away from rest isn't quite as abrupt as it is with Volkswagen's smaller ID3. Uh, that's mostly because the ID4 is nearly 200 kilos heavier, and that's a fact which affects most areas of this car's drive demeanor, uh, sometimes helpfully, sometimes not. That, of course, is a legacy of the substantial battery packs that this car has to carry about. Uh, base models, which respectively feature electric motors developing either 148 or 170 PS, use a 52 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, offering a claimed driving distance of up to 213 miles. This longer range variant uh, using a motor putting out 204 PS has a rather more substantial 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and that ups the range to as much as 310 miles, although we've never seen anything like that throughout this test. Like Volkswagen's original post-war Beetle, this car is rear-driven and when you drive it in town, you'll realize uh, really quickly the advantages of placing that powertrain, the electric motor and the associated single-speed auto gearbox on the back axle. That frees up the front wheels for steering duties and the result is a London taxi-like 10.2 metre turning circle. Uh, beyond the city limits, that drive format allows for a near 50-50, almost perfect weight distribution, which together with the low centre of gravity that's provided by that central battery pack, uh, helps to disguise the portly weight that this SUV has to carry around. Traction through the turns is excellent and body roll is checked by firm damping that's been cleverly engineered for suppleness over poor surfaces. All of which ought to provide the recipe for a decently sporting EV and in some ways it does. Although the steering, while it is accurate, offers uh, disappointingly little real feedback. If you do prioritize performance in your choice of ID4, then Volkswagen wants you to consider the top flagship GTX variant, which sees a top 77 kilowatt hour battery mated to electric motors on both axles, and that delivers four wheel drive capability and a more potent 299 PS total output. That variant gets an extra traction mode to add to the other drive settings that are common across the model lineup. Uh, there's comfort, there's sport and individual. Plus you get an eco setting too, which uh, to maximize range, uh, you'll have to frequently use in combination with the available B regenerative braking function. Now this slows the car significantly when you come off the throttle. Whatever ID4 model you select, your charging regime should be quite straightforward. Uh, there's a WeCharge app which helps you to find and use over 150,000 public charge points. An AC single phase 7.2 kilowatt garage wall box would replenish the 52 kilowatt hour model from zero in about nine and a half hours. Think a little over 12 hours for the 77 kilowatt hour variant. What about if you find a public rapid charger along your route? Well, the smaller 52 kilowatt hour battery supports 100 kilowatt DC charging. The 77 kilowatt hour battery ups that to 125 kilowatts, which means that even on this longer range model at a DC 3 100 kilowatt charge point, it'd take no more than around 30 minutes to recharge your ID4 enough to, uh, to cover the next 137 miles. This ID4, says Volkswagen styling chief Klaus Sikiora, represents the evolution of electric vehicle design. Well, it's certainly an evolution from the friendly but slightly anonymous look of its showroom stablemate, the ID3 family hatch, and it's a more substantial thing. It's 287 mils longer and 60 mils higher with short bonnet proportions, unlike any existing Volkswagen SUV. 
The profile is certainly distinctive uh, thanks to a variety of careful touches. An A-pillar that starts a long way forward, a strong wave-like shoulder line, uh, arched flanks and a low dynamic roof arch that's here trimmed in silver, which is intended to make the silhouette look long and stretched. All the key drive stuff sits over the rear axle, uh, principally the single-speed gearbox and the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, which has been mated to it. Uh, both are very efficiently packaged. Now Volkswagen says that both elements uh, together with the associated control electronics they collectively weigh uh, just 90 kilos and they could fit into a typical gym bag. All of this is powered by a high voltage battery which has been efficiently arranged in the underbody to save space. Which leaves nothing to sit here at the front end but a few auxiliary units like the air conditioning compressor and of course the steering rack. So just as with the original rear engine Beetle there's no need for a grill to embellish this flat front end which sees air flow through this hexagonal trimmed wide inlet lower down which has a silver trimmed lower frame. Uh, the brand badge sits simply on this narrow light strip which above base trim rather neatly illuminates when these large headlamps are on full beam. At the rear, if you can stretch beyond uh, base trim, the LED tail lamp clusters get 3D animation with light emitting diodes featuring fiber optic cable elements lighting in an unusually rich red. More importantly, under all of this sits the car's sophisticated MEB platform, uh, development of which has taken the lion's share of the 54 billion pounds that the Volkswagen Group has spent in developing its new era EV technology. Enough with the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. There's no need for a gear lever, an ignition slot or a handbrake, and that's just the beginning of the things that you'll have to adjust to in a cabin that's designed around what VW calls an open space concept. Uh, you sit quite high on top of all those batteries, and the interior design has an airy but minimalist and rather clinical feel, which Volkswagen has tried unsuccessfully to lift by imprinting plain pause symbols on the two footwell pedals. It's all very similar to the ID3, but with an extra dose of maturity that's emphasized by this uh, silver central fascia strip. There's not much in the way of switch gear, and of course you do without uh, the conventional instruments. All of that is replaced by a couple of TFT displays, a little 5.3 inch one behind the steering wheel here, and a main tablet of 10 inches in size in the center of the dash. It all feels a generation on from the cabin design that you'd find in most more established EV crossover rivals. Build quality, uh, that's generally good, but cheaper plastics do betray the cost cutting that was necessary to undergird all that sophisticated EV technology. Uh, the gear selector is housed in a right-hand protrusion from the instrument binnacle here, although here there's the additional novelty in the fact that the whole binnacle moves up and down as you adjust the wheel. Uh, other adjustments, well, they're done using either touch-sensitive buttons like uh, the fiddly sliders here for the climate system or with voice control prefaced by the command Hello ID. Right, time to take a look out back. Now, Volkswagen claims that there's as much legroom back here as you get in a Mercedes E-Class executive saloon or in their large seven-seat Tiguan Allspace SUV. Certainly feels like it. It's also a wider cabin than you'd expect a compact and mid-sized SUV to be able to provide. And with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could certainly fit uh, reasonably easily into the back of this car. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Uh, once that wide hatch rises, the space provided is uh, 543 litres. The rear bench doesn't split flexibly 40-20-40 like it does in, say, that BMW iX3 we mentioned earlier on. But Volkswagen does at least provide a ski hatch so longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Uh, flattening the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 1,575 litres of capacity if you load to roof height. Voted World Car of the Year at its introduction, the ID4 is certainly a world-class SUV. Mind you, it ought to be, given the investment that's gone into it. Uh, this isn't yet a mainstream Volkswagen model, but the day isn't very far off when it will be. 
When that happens, we can only hope that EVs will have become rather more affordable than they are now. But if this ID4 sells globally in the kind of numbers that the brand's hoping for, that's unlikely to happen. Like all manufacturers, the Wolfsburg maker will charge what customers show they're prepared to pay. So is this ID4 worth the sticker price? Well, many customers will think so. It has the quality look and feel of a premium brand product, enough just to justify the extra cost over its almost identically engineered Skoda Enyaq IV VW Group cousin. We certainly admire the ID4's brilliant packaging, the ride and refinement, and the way it's so easy to adapt to for those converting from fossil fuel. It's not perfect, of course. It could certainly be more engaging to drive. Yes, the build quality isn't all it could be in every area. And for sure, the value in the range certainly lies with the more affordable models. For all that though, there's a lot to like here and it's delivered with a much higher end feel than you get in the ID3. Ultimately, if all you care about in a crossover EV of this kind is value and driving range, then this probably won't be your first choice. But if your priorities are a bit broader than that and you want a little more feel-good factor in a car of this sort, then this ID4 might well have your number.